Elder Moses Thatcher spoke of the fallibility of human nature, and his own feeling of timidity in standing before the Latter-day Saints, lest in anything he might have said or done he might have rendered himself unworthy of that aid and succor of the Holy Spirit, so essential to have as a public teacher. He therefore asked for the combined faith and prayers of the saints in his behalf. He then read from page 423, Doctrine and Covenants, Behold, many are called, but few are chosen, etc. There is no prophecy or prayer found in all pages of Holy Writ more beautiful and pure than the sentiments contained in the portion he had just read. If we would enjoy all the blessings connected with the Holy Priesthood, we must learn to wield its powers in strict conformity with the dictations of the Holy Ghost. Without the guidance of that Spirit, we are constantly exposed to errors and wrongdoing. On what condition can we secure the guidance of the Spirit of God? Only by faithfully keeping God's commandments and living humbly before Him. He illustrated the power of the Holy Priesthood and the strictness with which the Lord held those who wielded it accountable by reference to the history of Moses in his connection with the children of Israel. Alluded to the smiting of the rock when water gushed out to satisfy the thirst of the people, showing that the spirit in which Moses performed that act caused the displeasure of the Almighty. What a lesson this should teach us! It should influence us to be humble and become as little children. As the Savior taught to his disciples when he said, He that will be greatest in the kingdom of heaven must become as this little child. Any one who seeks to honor the good name of his fellow men instead of the glory of God will certainly be destitute of the power and influence of the Holy Ghost. Whatever views we may entertain in regard to cooperation in the United Order, we may rest assured that God never intended to establish a class distinction or moneyed aristocracy among this people. He denounced in most emphatic terms the folly of covetous ambition, which produces hardness of heart and an unwillingness to be guided by the counsels of the servants of God. There is no sacrifice too great to make to secure the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the love of the Lord. God is a jealous God. We should therefore worship Him in all humility, give to Him the glory of our success, and learn lessons from the pure and guileless spirit of a little child. He then exhorted the brethren to lay aside all bickerings and backbitings, and encouraged all Latter-day Saints to do their duty, and carry out the scripture instructions given to allay hard feelings. There is no reason why there should be jealousies and distrust, neither is there any reason why we should not enjoy all the blessings connected with the gospel. Men who are under the influence of the Spirit of God will always seek after the best interests of the kingdom of God. The speaker denounced hypocrisy in the worship of money and showed the necessity of a frank, honest, ingenuous course of personal labor, faithfulness, and integrity, of prayer and strict attention to every duty and the avoidance of evil in every form, that we may not only be the called of God, but be numbered among the chosen." He testified that though some were erring, there were many thousands in Israel who had not bowed the knee to Baal, and though some of them may not be noted among the people, they would shine among the jewels of God, and obtain that power of, in the words he had read, which, without compulsory means, would flow into them forever.